Hello everybody, thank you for coming. Uh, this talk is going to be about um, testing, building and releasing add-ons and trying to automate it somehow. Uh, I thought that maybe it could be interested for, interesting for you because uh, I've started working with Blender just two years uh, ago, mostly uh, developing and helping Blender Kit with, with their add-ons. And I came from this background where, uh, where I, I've studied like fine arts and then worked for a while as a quality engineer in, in Red Hat. Uh, so I'm not like extremely experienced coder, but uh, I like testing somehow. Uh, and when I first met with Blender, I I had this uh, uh, strange feeling that it reminds me of Python, but it's not like Python, uh, like pure Python. There are some, some catches and the environment is a little bit uh, uh, strange in, in a way. And when I started, uh, when I started uh, searching for ways how to test test the add-on uh, i've realized that like setting up unit tests and like other kind of tests uh, is not gonna be the same as when uh, you are testing just a classical python module or something like that uh, uh, after two years, <laughs> I have figured some ways, hopefully, uh, and I'm not sure if th these are correct uh, because uh, I found that like sources are limit limited, and um, I found just just a few uh, uh, like threads on the Blender uh, Blender developers forum and uh, in the other sources. So uh, this talk. Is gonna be like um, my sharing of the ways how how we do it in in Blender Kit, and also I would like to uh, show you some of the GitHub actions uh, we've set to maybe help you with just basic uh, basic tasks on GitHub if you are using GitHub for uh, for development of your add-on. Uh, so first thing I will show you is really uh, simple GitHub action for uh, automating the builds. Uh, the second one will be like expanding it a little bit more to automate uh, the release process. And then uh, we will uh, look at the ways how we use unit tests. Um, and and then we will in incorporate it into a uh, GitHub action. Yeah, so one one thing or like one question could be why to automate anything or uh, why to test anything. Uh, I know that uh, probably I have this feeling that there are two kinds of uh, developers uh, of Blender add-ons. One, one kind of developer is this 3D generalist who somehow started to be interested in like creating add-on. So these people come from the, the 3D world and another kind of person could be somebody who is more interested, interested into programming in Python and she he is just exploring uh, the, the beautiful world of Python in, inside Blender. Uh, and I know that for some of us, or like for most developers, uh, it could be quite boring to to write tests. And we all love to develop new features and deliver new new stuff. Uh, and like the automation, some sometimes is uh, like takes a few hours or a few work days to set up. And we we um, instead of like spending this time on, on automating it we, we choose to like develop more and more more features which can be a trap some sometimes so uh, yeah uh, 
one one thing we know is that like beautiful is better than ugly, but also like explicit is better than implicit. And I believe that when like we we uh, we we write our processes in code, we make them somehow explicit. Uh, in, in the beginnings, when I started in, in Blender Kit, uh, we did some pre-release, pre and at that time, we were just like, bundling the, the zip file manually, and we did this terrible, uh, terrible mistake that uh, we zipped it in in a wrong way. So uh, I don't know how many of you could like if if you. If you want to deliver the Blender add-on and you have multiple files, you should you, you zip them, right? And when the user unzips the zip file, uh, should there be a, a directory named uh, in the same way as the as the add-on, or there should be files directly? Who thinks there should be like just files without like being in the directory? Willem, great. Another another person. And who thinks that it should uh, it should be like in the Blender Kit directory or like my add-on directory, and then in this directory there should be files. Yeah, you know. yeah. I'm not sure. You know, <laughs> every time I, I I think about this question, I just download some add-on which works, <laughs> and I take a look. You know, but like as you as we are like releasing. Uh, Every every week or every month or like once in a year, it it starts to be a repetitive task, and at some some day you will just think like, yeah, I remember, you know, like I do it this way, and then you deliver pre-release in in better better case, or just the release to users, and somebody finds out that it's broken, you know, uh, it should be in directory, I think. Uh, so. Uh, being explicit is better and like trying to automate things because like when, once you have the build file like or the script which builds it for you then you can be pretty sure that it it's the correct way you know unless somebody created the evil pull request but you should check your pull requests so before merging yeah uh, another another uh, reason might be that that should be just one way one obvious way to do it so uh, we, I will later show you a uh, development script we, we use. Yeah. Yeah. And I want, I want to sh like share this talk with you because I'm not, I'm not Dutch. So I know that it can be, uh, it might not be obvious. So yeah, I'm, uh, I would like to show, show more people like what we have found and maybe we, we can talk later about like may, maybe better ways um yeah so let's let's now s uh, like close the presentation and I will skip to visual studio code so i have some pretty <laughs> simple add-on it's it just basically does nothing you know it just like says hello on, on register it says buy on unregister uh it's a set. It's I, I've said it in in two uh, like more than complicated uh, way because I have like this other module called Nice, which actually does does the stuff. And then there's a, another uh, sub module called N Panel, which just creates a button in the N Panel, and uh, and there's some another operator which. Uh, prints uh, another <laughs> text, so it's pretty basic. You know, it's useless basically. But the structure uh, it follows uh, the structure you might want to use in your in your, in your uh, add-ons uh, because sometimes you don't want. In most cases, if your your add-on is a bit more complicated, you don't want to just have one huge file. You sometimes you don't want to have multiple fi multiple files in 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 one directory. Sometimes you want to create a subdirectory or something like that and structure the code a little bit more. So uh, this this structure uh, follows like the structure you might use in in, in like medium-sized add-on sometimes. Uh, it, it will be uh, like la later uh, 
important when we, when we look at the unit testings. Uh, so uh, this could be your add-on and you could, you could be just creating the zips manually. Uh, uh, as we want to, uh, I wanted to, like, help, help uh, with the with the builds, uh, and make it as, as fast as possible to to create uh, automated builds. So we have created a, a, a GitHub action called uh, Blender Addon Build. Uh, you can check it on the uh, marketplace. Uh, on GitHub, and I will show you how to how to set set this basic uh, how to use this action to uh, to create automatic builds uh, on pull requests and, and merges to to your uh, main branch. Uh, so I'm not sure how many of you like are no no uh, no uh, blend no github actions or how, how many of you are using actively like github actions uh, some of you yeah nice uh, yeah so when we want to create a github uh, github action we first need to set up uh, a sub subdirectory called the github and in this subdirectory, we need to set another uh, subdirectory called workflows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Better? Right. Thanks, thanks. Uh, so uh, we will have a subdirectory github uh, dot github and then then uh, another subdirectory workflows and for for the beginning i i will i will use this uh, simple build uh, file which i copy from from the, the 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 repository which i will share with you in the end uh, i should probably like rename one of those so it it's like Not sure how to do that. Okay. Ah, great. It's okay. Um, let's let's live with that. Okay. So so I I've added uh, the simple build file uh, and this is pretty basic basic uh, GitHub GitHub workflow. Uh, there's some name, uh, and then I, I define situations when this uh, work, workflow should should run. Uh, it should run on uh, on pushes uh, to 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 our main branch. Uh, that's that's like after managing a PR or if you are like committing directly, which is a bad idea. Uh, then uh, it will it will run on every commit to uh, any push to main branch. And then I want to also like to uh, to run this this action on uh, any pull request uh, created in your in your repository. This this really helps because like when when somebody else creates a pull pull request uh, to your to your add-on or uh, when when you are just like creating a pull request for yourself, uh, you can see the see the zip zip in there and you can. Like download it and send it to uh, to the reporter of the of the uh, of the bug, and you can get the feedback quite quite fast. Also, there there's this work workflow dispatch, which means that you can uh, trigger it manually. Uh, that can be handy also sometimes. Uh, and then there's definition of this uh, of this uh, job, uh, which is quite easy. I just like, we name we name the first job build. Uh, we will run it on Ubuntu latest. Uh, that's the runner available uh, at, on the GitHub actions. Uh, and then we define steps, and there's just one step. It's it's build add-on, and it uses the our GitHub action uh, Blender add-on build. Uh, in production, you probably should like define a stable version here, but for now, I'm using like the latest at, at main, and uh, then. Uh, I just specify how how I want the artifacts to be to be named uh, at the end. In this in this case, I, s I define like sample item. 
This GitHub action also supports uh, excluding files, which is a good idea. Sometimes uh, you can see add-ons which uh, have like all, all, the, all the other other files inside uh, by mistake. Uh, so it's uh, like what I'm doing here. I'm just excluding .git. I'm excluding .github because I don't want my workflows uh, in, in the add-on. It doesn't make sense. I'm excluding readme md and probably I, should, uh, I could like exclude git ignore if I if I had any. Yeah. So so this is the uh, this is the action and I will just name the commit some, some somehow nicely and I will push it to to main branch which is a bad idea but. Yeah, and as, as you can see, it, it runs, and now it will fail, as on live demos happens uh, every time. Yeah, I got lucky. Yeah, so and I, I have, uh, here I have uh, the, the the build add-on, so I can I can download it and and use it in in, in Blender. Yeah, mm. yeah, that, that's like the, the first first thing you. You might want to set up if you are not using any any automation or you are not not uh, building the add-on through uh, any 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 script uh, that that can help you. Also, this is this is great because it makes life a little bit easier. You know, now I have the I, now I have the build just with the one PR. If if this was a pull request, that would be just like the one or two commits fixing the the problem, and I can easily. Uh, send uh, send a zip file to uh, to the user who, who was reporting the bug. Uh, yeah, I I think that uh, like when 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 things are easier, we tend to like develop more and and do the stuff. Uh, sometimes we can uh, just think, yeah, I will I will do one one or two features and I will send the the fixes tomorrow. You know, uh, this this helps me a lot. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So, one uh, like if we want to expand it, expand on it, uh, expand on the automated builds a little bit more, uh, we then could use uh, the GitHub action for for releases, uh, which just basically does uh, that. It, it builds, it uses the build uh, build action, and then it automatically creates the the GitHub release. It it can be also like if you are re releasing uh, more often, uh, this might this might uh, help you a little bit more. And once we, I will, I will copy it again and show you. Yeah. So so this uh, this workflow is a little bit expanded. It it's workflow which which is just uh, being uh, dispatched manually because we want. To uh, to set the, the releases when when when, I, when we want to to make them, so it has some uh, some inputs. The inputs I, I use are the the yeah. There's one required uh, input which is version, and by default it's one one point zero point zero. Important thing is to uh, to ad adhere uh, permissions uh, to contents right because uh, otherwise the GitHub uh, GitHub action uh, wouldn't be able to to create the release on the on the GitHub page, and then there are there are, there are two jobs one one of uh, one one job is like the build we we have used before, and the second one is uh, build, uh, is the release release job. Which uh, has this uh, definition needs build, so it, it waits for the build uh, build work workflow to to finish, and then using the the Blender and release uh, action, I just define the artifact name, which should be the same as the artifact name specified in the step before. Uh, if you are using uh, your custom custom uh, script for making uh, Real, uh, builds you can you can skip this this part and define your your own workflow and and build uh, build the 
the add-on in, in the way you need and then just upload the artifact and uh, remember which artifact name you use and then just define it in here. So uh, this this release action is, is not tied to uh, to only this, this one uh, GitHub action we've created, but you can use it also like with, with other other workflows uh, for sure. Uh, yeah, and then I just defined uh, the release name, which which will appear on the release page, and the version which I take from the from the inputs. The the action has some more t tweaks and uh, 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 preferences uh, which could be set, but these are just like the most simple simple things. Uh, so I will just commit it once more. Uh, and now uh, it will run again because I just pushed into into the main branch. But now, uh, in, uh, under the actions tab, I can see I have a simple release, and I can run the workflow and uh, create the create the release for me. Uh, it will it will take some time. Is it gonna fail or not? Yeah, it, there's still no release because it, it doesn't like create the release directly. It just creates a draft for the release. So this is the uh, this is the draft. I have uh, the zip file named here with, with the version. Uh, you can tune the the naming as as you like, but we mostly use this. Or I like this format, like the name of the add-on and then then the version. Uh, yeah, and now you can just like put the text and and, and release the add-on. So uh, these these were like two actions, like two basic actions uh, to to help you to automate a little bit of the workflow. Uh, yeah, and now what we what we would uh, probably what we should do now uh, as we. Uh, Progress a little bit more with, with the automation in the add-on. It could be uh, starting with testing some basic tests. Uh, yeah, for for this reason, uh, I've realized that. Okay, I, I will now I will now uh, skip to the to the complete repository uh, because the, the, the copying would would take some time. So this is the, the final repository, and I will show you how how the things are set it up. Uh, I use this this file called dev.py, which uh, uh, in some cases. Like in case of Blender Kit and some other add-ons, I, I want to have a little bit more control over the uh, the internals of the add-on. So uh, we use uh, we use custom uh, custom uh, Python code to control the process a little bit more. Uh, in this uh, do build function, they are just uh, first of all I we, I'm not like I'm adding just just some uh, some files which I. Which I which I want, and I also ignore some files as as was seen in the uh, in the action before. One one difference is that uh, because I want to uh, run tests, uh, I have a switch here uh, or like if, if if statements here, so I can uh, choose whether I want to add my test files into the into the add-on or not. Uh, this is a little bit controversial, but because like in in real world, uh, you want to test the the same artifact which goes into production or like to your users, uh, 
it could be uh, it could be done i think uh, by creating uh, another add-on which would be installed in parallel to the to the uh, to the original build but uh, for us uh, like like the easiest way is to just pack the, the test files into the add-on uh, when, when we need them so basically i we just use this switch uh, uh, called like include include test files which which uh, uh, adds all the tests into the zip file uh, yeah another thing uh, which uh, i which i have in this uh, in this file is uh, this run test function which basically calls the uh, which opens uh, new new sub process uh, and calls Blender with with this optional flex. Uh, we don't need need any any, any visual output, so uh, so um, only in, uh, we, we force the Blender to to run in background. We we don't need audio. Uh, I I start the Blender also with factory startup. So if there are any other uh, under other add-ons installed. Uh, it it will just ignore them and load the the, the factory uh, fac factory uh, version of the of the blender, and then I also uh, define exit code uh, for situations when the when the Python which I want which I will execute in the in the blender uh, fails. So I set the uh, the exit code to one, and then I define the 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 file with the script which i want to uh, to run in the blender and this test tests the .py file is something which imports uh, all the unit tests uh, other than then, uh, that uh, in this file i have just uh, some some basic parsing because I, I what what i want uh, to do is to yeah I, I want I want to have some nice at least nice uh, somehow nice interface so uh, I have like two subcommands one is called Python dev dot, uh, one is called build so when I, I run the build uh, build subcommand it will it will create the uh, the zip for me and this is probably even better than using the github action because you can also you have the same script uh, which you could use in, in the github workflow by not using the action but just like running this uh, uh, this script of yours in in the workflow directly but you can also build with the same code the add-on locally so uh, it's not uh, two different codes two different processes it's just one one code which you can run on different uh, environments and resources uh, and another command I have here is the test command, which will which will trigger this uh, this run tests, uh, which will call this run tests uh, function, and it will start the start the tests. So how the tests are uh, defined? Uh, I've put them into the tests subdirectory, and uh, like the the main file is is this one. First, I'm importing unit tests, and then I import add-on utils. Uh, I import add-on utils because I need to enable the add-on because uh, I want to start the Blender with uh, with factory startup. So I need to enable my add-on manually, uh, and then I, I create like all manually, automatically through through the code. Uh, then I, I create a, a unit test runner. Uh, suite and test loader and uh, once I have the suite I I load uh, the test cases from from another uh, from other files I could uh, like you also can have all the files inside this this uh, script but at some like if your add-on is bigger it's probably good to organize it a little bit so this example shows ways how to load the, load the test cases from another files uh, yeah so I have uh, one one 
one test file uh, called test underscore nice, which focuses on testing the this <laughs> terribly stupid uh, file in my add-on. Uh, what what it does? Uh, it basically just checks the uh, checks the uh, the, uh, the 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 STD out uh, in in Blender and checks whether uh, the the hello and goodbye is, is printed. So for for that uh, for for this, I first uh, call a setup method uh, in the test case uh, class, and I and, and I set uh, um, uh, I set the STD out uh, to string IO and. I also use the teardown method to uh, to like clean after this test case, and then I have two methods: one for uh, for testing the hello function and one for testing the goodbye uh, goodbye function. Yeah, so like th these tests are like totally basic because like the whole uh, addon is basic. But uh, what what took me a lot of time in the in the beginning when I, I tried to like realize like how to set up the unit test and stuff like that was uh, this problem of uh, uh, of paths that uh, it sometimes behaves a little bit strange in uh, in in Blender environment. So I I I try even though the addon is really basic, I try to show. Uh, like how how things could be like structured that we can have like multiple uh, unit tests based on multiple files and how to import them correctly and stuff like that. Yeah, so this is a simple uh, test file for the nice uh, module, and then I have a, a test file for the uh, like n panels module of the of the addon and. Here I have uh, two test cases. One test case tests the the hello world panel, and another test uh, tests the hello world pop up. Uh, yeah. I like. Uh, I think that even though I'm using unit tests, uh, uh, I found out that. Just testing, like making writing unit tests in, in for Blender add-ons or or for operators in in, in add-ons. Uh, I don't have this feeling that th these are like really unit tests. Uh, it feels more like uh, integration tests or something like that uh, because uh, it's really hard to uh, to. I, I don't know. I, I think that I need to to test the integration with with Blender with. Uh, with, with, with the whole environment, so I would, uh, so I sometimes uh, like write the test conceptually as it, as these were more like integration tests. So, for example, I like to define the, or like be in control uh, with the uh, with the flow. So uh, I often define the uh, the uh, the test classes with with numbers. So I have. Uh, so I have, I'm explicitly saying which which one will be first and then which one will be the the second uh, and and etc. Et uh, if you look at the test case, it's really basic. Uh, first first uh, first method test just if the word panel was registered uh, like successfully and the second. Uh, Second uh, test checks whether uh, the uh, the panel can be uh, can be found in the uh, in in the uh, screen uh, areas. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, how does it look when uh, when when we execute this? It's Python FP test. Oh, great. <laughs> so, what's the problem here? Yeah, yeah finally, it.
Great. Uh, yeah. Then I will show you how it works in, in the GitHub where, where, where it still works because I, I didn't broke it one hour before this presentation trying to improve uh, last details until I broke it all down. Uh, yeah, how, how to integrate this, this setup into, into, the, uh, into the GitHub. Uh, what I use often is, is this uh, longer workflow, uh, which, which builds and tests the, the add-in on multiple versions of, uh, of Blender. Uh, release released versions and also re versions which are alpha beta or uh, release candidates so uh, this is the workflow i use uh, it's called build and test for now uh, it runs on uh, on the, the pushes to main and on all pull requests and also can be triggered manually and first i uh, i build the uh, i build the add-on and now as I have created the nice devpy file and I have wrote my own ways how to build the add-on, uh, I'm not no longer I'm no longer using the the build action. I'm now directly calling the the devpy file with the build subcommand, and then I just store the artifacts um, store the artifacts in the uh, uh, after the workflow ends. Sometimes what's also like good idea is to uh, name the artifacts a little bit uh, more than just uh, name of your addon.zip. Uh, what, what I like is to, uh, to name it, for example, if you build on pull requests, you can take the number of the, of the PR and put it into the zip. It, uh, it helps you with, with the organization uh, because sometimes you, uh, you send the file to multiple users, and it could be a little bit uh, uh, misleading when when you have just like sample add on one, sample add on two, three, five. Uh, you know, it's better to to have the pull, pull pull request number in the name. So when you open your downloads directory, you you see which 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 version uh, should go to which, which user. Uh, also on the on the main branch, I like to, for example, put there uh, the SHA of the of the last commit. So uh, these zips are like ident identifiable somehow. Uh, yeah, and then what what I what I do is basically I call I run uh, another script, and this this is gonna be the last script I will show you and. Uh, uh, this script is co called make tests metrics.py and it's a it's a script which checks the uh, the blender uh, resources and checks uh, for the the latest uh, available versions uh, this file looks like this because i also want to define the uh, the versions uh, on which I want to to test, uh, I have I start with this this list of versions I want to test on. Uh, I I like to uh, keep like the first uh, first uh, patch version uh, of uh, any any minor releases. So so I have like three uh, three dot zero dot zero, and then I have the latest or like the highest patch version which is like in this case 3.0.1 but in cases of uh, long uh, in case of long lds uh, uh, releases it's 3.3.0 3 and then i have the latest uh, or like the the highest highest patch number which is 3.3.12 3 uh, recently uh, I don't want to test on all like patch versions. It, it would be just like not so ecological. So I think this is a good compromise. And then in the end, uh, in this uh, in this script, I I have this small function which checks uh, the 
the buildablender.org uh, da uh, slash downloads slash daily and it it, uh, it it like extracts the the alpha versions beta versions if if there are any and adds, adds, adds those into the into the uh, test metrics yeah and in the end it, it it just prints this metrics out and gets used by the uh, uh, by the next uh, step uh, next job in the in the workflow and this workflow then looks like this it basically it, it loads uh, the, the 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 metrics from the from the previous uh, previous uh, script I've shown you before and then there are just few few simple um, few simple steps I check out the, the I check out the the repository. Uh, I do a cached a download of the Blender uh, binary, which I I got the URLs in the in the uh, in the script before. Uh, I download the Blender. I, I I just create some some repository for it and extract it and stuff like that. All the boring stuff just just like untar the untar the blender and then i run run the the tests and it's it looks like this it's just python dev py test and then i there's this uh, flag install add which defines the location where where the add-on should be installed which is maybe also the thing i forgot in the demo and the reason why it didn't work locally yeah so yeah okay finally so how how it looks how the test looks uh, uh locally the unit test looks like this uh, it ran the six cases it was quite fast it, it in the background it opened the blender it started the uh, the test file it loaded all the test cases and executed them one by one and as the the, the python script ex, uh, exited with zero then also the blender exited with zero otherwise it would exit with one and it will it will, it will be shown in the in my terminal and it it it, it, it would also like fail uh, the the tests and how it looks on the github um, i will open the the final version of this uh, sample add-on mm. it runs on pull requests but i will show you uh, that i can also <laughs> i can also run it on uh, manually so uh, i just choose this bill and test workflow and I, I can choose the branch and I will I will run the, the workflow and let's see how it goes so uh, one thing it, it it makes the build and it uploads the build as, uh, as the artifact after uh, this uh, this whole uh, workflow ends and Beside that, it also runs this uh, make tests metrics workflow, which which uh, gets all the versions and all URLs of recent versions of Blender, and then in the next step in this metrics, it loads uh, loads this this list of versions we want to to test, and it creates uh, one job for every for every uh, for every version of uh, Blender we want to test, uh, which then looks like this. So this is my final uh, final run for the uh, f f my final run of this workflow. I have tests for Blender 3.00, tests for Blender 3.01, 
also for 3.3.12 and I'm testing also on Blender Alpha uh, 4.1 and, and Beta 4.0.0. Uh, and this is this could be quite useful. Uh, I've managed to find some problems with, with Blender 4.0.0 and our add-ons. So we catched them like before the official release, which is a good good thing. So uh, if you are interested in maybe like expanding your text, test metrics or like testing on more more versions of Blender. Uh, this could be a way or like inspiration for you how to how to achieve that and uh, yeah I if you find any problems in my in my um, concept or, or or my scripts I, I would be more than happy to uh, to get feedback or like email or pull requests uh, because I, I found that the, the resources for the inspirations are not that uh, like white in in this Python and Blender uh, environment, as it is in pure uh, Python, for example. Yeah, uh, so I think this this could be uh, the end. Maybe if you have any questions, you can ask me now.